in Christ. In the spirit of Valentine's Day, my wife and I, we were talking about the incredible honeymoon trip that we got to take together uh, four and a half years ago. Um, we got to take a road trip from southeastern Wisconsin all the way up to Glacier National Park in northwest Montana. Now, some people, when they plan honeymoons, they like to go to tropical climates. They like to go to day spas. They like to have swim-up bars. My wife planned a honeymoon where we did a backpacking trip that required 30-pound pack on our backs and multiple 16-mile-day hikes up a mountain and back down again. I had never done that before. Julie had. She loved to hike in Yellowstone. She's, she had done those things, but I had never done that before. We were excited for it. It was beautiful. But if you've ever hiked in high altitude for the first time, you know that it does some awful things to your body. I remember that first day of hiking, which turned out to be 16 miles with a 30-pound pack on our back, up a mountain, and then back down again, all in one day. And I remember going up to what would have been the saddle, where it was going to be this beautiful view with a valley on one side, a valley on another side. I remember trying to get up there, and for about six miles, Honestly and legitimately wanting to die. Just wanting the sweet release of death on the way up there. And my wife got a lot of good practice as an encourager that day. Uh, just telling me, Greg, if we just make it to the top, everything's going to be better after that. Just make it up this mountain, get to the saddle, everything's going to be better. And I got there. And it was a glorious sight. It was gorgeous. It was wonderful. And I thought, okay, the next seven, eight miles, this is going to be a piece of cake coming down this mountain. It turns out that going down a mountain is also very tiring with a 30-pound pack on your back, bashing your knees in as you walk down. It hurt just as much as the way up. Good honeymoon. But that's, that experience has come up a lot in my life. I think of it often and how so many times in my life I feel like if I just get through this next stage, everything's going to be better after that. If I just get to the end of this one project, if I just get through this week or this stage in my life, everything's going to be easy after that. It's all going to work out. And oftentimes, when I discover is that the road after that is just as hard. Maybe you've experienced the same things. Maybe it's getting through school and you think, if I just get to graduation day, everything's going to be better. Maybe it's in a relationship, getting to that next stage, getting married, reaching the end of uh, an anniversary. If I can just get to that next marker, everything's going to be better after that. Or maybe it's your work life. If I can just get through the next project or get to retirement, it's all going to work out. And maybe you reach that day, and it does feel glorious. Graduation day, your wedding, retirement. Oh, and it feels so, so good. But then what happens after that? Maybe you have trouble finding a job. Married life is harder than you pictured. Your health starts to fail you. And you start to wonder, where did all that glory go? This road is just as hard as the road that took me here. Why am I doing this? And we discover that the roads are often very difficult in life. Now we reach and we strive and we try to get to the end of them, but sometimes that glory does not stick around. And that's something the disciples had to discover too. We're going to read in a moment about a really special day in the disciples' lives, three of them. Peter, James, and John, who got to witness something glorious. Who they had been spending a couple of years now with Jesus, and, and not of all, all those days were easy. They were often rejected. Sometimes people didn't treat them very well, and, and they were often confused by what they were supposed to be doing with Jesus. But on this day, it felt like everything was coming together. Here was the glory they were looking for, the glory they wanted on earth, but that glory didn't stick around. 
And the road that came after that really special day was probably harder than they ever even imagined it could be. So we'll turn with me now to Mark chapter 9. And we're going to read about this really special day, but we're also going to see how that special day, that glorious day, led to a road of humility and, and actually led, leads all of us to the glory that we all need. So we turn to Mark chapter 9. After six days, Jesus took Peter, James, and John with him and led them up a high mountain where they were all alone. There he was transfigured before them. His clothes became dazzling white, whiter than anyone in the world could bleach them. And there appeared before them Elijah and Moses, who were talking with Jesus. Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us put up three shelters, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He didn't know what to say. They were so frightened. Then a cloud appeared and covered them, and a voice came from the cloud, This is my son, whom I love. Listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, they no longer saw anyone with them except Jesus. And as they were coming down the mountain, Jesus gave them orders not to tell anyone what they had seen until the Son of Man had risen from the dead. This is the word of God. If you notice the beginning here, it said after six days. Well, six days after what? It was just six days before this where Jesus and his disciples had the conversation about what were people thinking about Jesus. Who did they think Jesus was? The disciples told them that there were a lot of mixed ideas out there. Some people just weren't sure what to make of him, whether he was a great teacher or a prophet or maybe something more. And then Jesus asked Peter, who do you think I am? And Peter gave that great witness that the church is built on, that you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And it was after that great witness of, that they knew that Jesus was somebody so, so special, that he was the one God had long promised, that Jesus started to really teach them in very blunt ways what the job of the Christ was. Jesus taught them this. He said, He began to teach them at the that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the teachers of the law, and that he must be killed and after three days rise again. This is not really the plan that the disciples had for the Christ. They thought the Christ was going to be this conquering, oh, excuse me. They thought the Christ was going to be this conquering king who's going to come through and restore glory to Israel, make it a powerful nation again. But then Jesus told them this. The job of the Christ was not to be a glorious king in this world, but instead that he was going to be a humble lamb. A lamb that was going to be led to the slaughter. Peter, he was so taken back by this, told Jesus, I'm not going to let this happen. I am not going to let you die like this. You're the Christ. And yet, this is the road Jesus needed to walk. This is the road that Jesus, the Christ, needed to travel down for the sake of the world. But it was so hard to accept that for the disciples. And so here was a day, just six days after Jesus started teaching this, where Jesus reminded them of who he really was. We got to hear about how he was transfigured before the disciples or transformed. And Mark, the way he describes it, talks about how Jesus' clothes were whiter than anybody in the world could make it. Uh, Matthew talks about how his face shone like the sun. And Luke said that his clothes were as bright as lightning. Here was Jesus standing before them, not as the humble carpenter that they were so used to seeing, but instead with the glory of God. Here was the Jesus who was going to be led like a lamb to the slaughter, shining like the sun. Now we have to remember that Jesus in, the earth, in his earthly ministry, he was 100% man and 100% God. That's what we always confess when we say true God and true man. He was both things all the time. And that's maybe a little bit confusing, but when we think about it, it's kind of, it's kind of like Jesus is the king who became a servant but never stopped being a king. The way we usually talk about Jesus is that he chose to set aside some of his divine or godly attributes. He chose not to make use of all of his divine powers. 
And so he did walk around as a man. He was 100% man who was tired, who would be thirsty, who would be hungry. That's who Jesus was. And yet this glory that he showed on top of this mountain, that's who Jesus was too. He was at the same time God. And the disciples needed to be reminded that because they were about to be going down a very, very hard road where they were going to see Jesus be put through some very unglorious things. And part of the support that Jesus had that day, which probably would have just blown uh, the disciples' minds, was getting to see Elijah and Moses standing there with Jesus. And they were so excited. Peter was so excited, but also confused and frightened, but so wanting to be there that he offered to set up little tents for all of them to stay on top of that mountain so that they would never, ever have to leave that glory, never have to leave this happy moment. And yet so quickly that moment faded away. Peter never had a chance to build any tents because it was time to leave that mountain. But who could blame Peter for wanting to build tents that day? Who could blame Peter for wanting to stay in that glory and to experience it for a long time? That's probably what any of us would have done. Who wants to leave glory days behind? We love feeling happy. We love feeling accomplished. We love feeling like we have made it. That's had to have been the way Peter was feeling that day. Here is the Christ. I knew this guy was special and here he is showing his glory. Why would they ever want to leave it? Maybe that's the way you feel too when you, when you finally feel like you've accomplished what you've been trying to do. Here I've made it to graduation. Here I've made it to my project's completion. Here I've made it to my wedding day. I never want to leave this glory behind. It feels too good. But sometimes, sometimes we don't have a choice. And even though we want to set up those little tents in our glory days and never leave that glory behind us, sometimes things come along and remove those glorious things from us, whether we like it or not. In a town in January, in, in New York, Middletown, New York, uh, a lady by the name of Diane had to experience this in a very real way. She left her home to go grocery shopping one day. She took a break from doing renovations on her home. And after she did her shopping and came back, her home that she was working so hard to fix up and her place that she was pouring her heart into, she came back and it was leveled completely destroyed. Why? Well, while she was out, her husband went out and rented a bulldozer, came back home, and leveled the whole thing. All their possessions, everything they had inside, completely gone. He said he tried calling her, um, but she didn't answer, so he just went ahead and did it. I'm not sure how their marriage is going now, not a great Valentine's Day present. But she didn't have a choice. Here it was. It happened to her. This home that she had poured her heart into, all of the memories and the things she'd accumulated, all of it gone. Just like that. Bulldozer coming through. When we travel down roads, we don't know what bulldozers are going to hit us. We don't know what health issues we're going to face. We don't know what job changes we're going to have to deal with. We don't know what family problems are going to come up. Sometimes the problems in life just bulldoze right over everything we think we've been working for, everything we've been hoping for, everything we thought was going to give us our glory days for the rest of our lives. Sometimes they're just gone. Sometimes it's because of what other people do to us and sometimes it's because of what we do to ourselves because of our sin. Sometimes it's because of the bad choices that we make and the roads that we go down because of our sinful nature. Whatever it is, those glory days, when they're gone, it hurts. It hurts a lot. It hurt the disciples too. It hurt the disciples to have to leave that mountain behind and have to see Jesus being rejected by so many people to see him put on trial, to see him falsely accused, to see him beaten, mocked, and even killed. And those disciples themselves, Peter, James, and John, they would go through some tough times themselves. Church tradition tells us that Peter, he was put on trial too, and he was crucified upside down. More painful than even the upright way. 
James, he was the first one of the other 12 disciples to be killed. He was beheaded. And John, he was eventually exiled from his homeland. These guys were going to go down some roads that were very, very hard. But Jesus knew that. And that's why the Transfiguration Day was so important. Because it was that day that Jesus showed them the light that they could always look to, no matter what roads they went down. As they were going to go through those trials and those uh, beatings and those deaths, the whole time they could always look to the end of the road and remember, Jesus' glory would shine through all of them. Jesus' glory would always be there at the end of the tunnel, shining the way, that, telling them that this world, these problems, they would eventually be, be gone. The glory of this world, that's not the glory that we look to. That isn't the glory that shines in the darkness of all of our problems and of all the things that scare us. The glory that shines the brightest is the glory of Jesus. And it's because he had that glory that he could make that journey to the cross. That he, could serve, that he could go through all those terrible things for what purpose? Well, it's because of this. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. This is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Jesus didn't leave that mountain in his full glory. He set it aside again. He walked humbly to the cross because of his love for us. It's because of our sin that we could have never, ever been able to approach God's glory. But since Jesus was willing to set aside his glory and go through the humility of death and pain and suffering, that he was willing to buy for us an eternal glory. As we face life, as we face all those humbling things that we go through, Jesus' glory, that light, shines at the end of every single road we go down because he made that road to the cross. He traveled it for us. Not because we loved him, but because he loved us. Whatever bulldozers come into your life, know that it's Jesus' light shining through all of them. And nothing can extinguish that light. We heard in our second lesson, a lot of other people, they might be veiled from that light. They might not recognize it. And when they see the humbling things that you go through, they might try to talk down to you. They might try to discourage you. But no matter what, Jesus' light shines through it all. Because Jesus won for you a glory that can't be bulldozed, can't be taken away by anything. He won for you the glory of heaven. And that's why we don't concentrate on setting up the tents here on earth. Because the tents come and go. The glory days, they change all the time. But the glory Jesus won for us, that's a glory that lasts forever. And that's what Jesus was talking about when he said that I'm leaving to go prepare a place for you in heaven. And I'm going to come back and take you there. Because it's in heaven that we have the glory days that go on forever. Not because we loved God, but because he loved us. And one for us a glory that will never fade, never end, and can never be changed. Right now, we might have to face some humility. And that's okay. Because it'll point our eyes ever closer, bring us ever holding tighter that glory Jesus won for us. And we never forget that glory, no matter what humility we face. And we never forget the humility that Jesus faced for us and the glory that will be ours forever. Amen. Won't you please pray, pray with me? Dear Jesus, thank you for showing your glory to your disciples. Because you did that, we get to read about it and we get to know that you did it so that no matter what we face in life, we get to see your glory at the end of every road we travel down. We get to know that your glory means that we have glory too. We have the glory of heaven waiting for us because you traveled in humility to the cross you face every, every humbling beating, every humbling death that you had to, all for us. Help us to never forget the glory that you won for us. In your name we pray. Amen.